So returning on camera is John on the right screen with his uh, fake bear deck. So that's the deck with the tracker of bears that doesn't actually have any bears or bear flutes in it. Appearing across from him for the first time today is Jason. Uh, now, as a reminder, both these decks are sealed decks, which meant that none of these players had not, uh, well knew what decks they were going to play prior to going into this event. So for everyone, this is their first time playing these decks. Of course, now that five rounds of Swiss have passed, uh, that's given each of these players five opportunities to get a little bit more familiar with the deck. So uh, perhaps some hidden synergies have emerged. And uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what comes out of that experience. <clears throat> Wild Wormhole with Jason runs into a lab work, one of my favorite cards. Anyone that plays deck builder games, I think uh, recognizes the value of things like archive getting stuff out of your hand, um, you know, potentially something that you only have one copy of a house, one copy of a card of a house, get rid of that, <clears throat> refill your hand, hopefully have something that uh, you have additional cards of that house in. John uh, follows up with a pocket universe. Pocket universe, I think it's basically safe place. I feel like it's almost exactly like that Shadows card safe place, where it allows you to safe keep uh, a bunch of amber that your opponent can't steal. That one's mine. All right, we're going to have to announce this one like golf. I don't think it's that bad. There's, there's a there's bunch of other in players room. in that room, too. Um, yeah, we weren't sure if we were going to do the top eight, but uh, there, were, there were two undefeated players, so they would have received the mats. They voted not to run a top eight. The other six players said, yeah, let's, let's run the top eight. So we'll only be doing two matches because the top two, but they both get a mat. So right. There's no difference in prizes. There's no saying? different prizes. We're not, we it's also, not like the, there's the store closes or anything in, like that. The store closes an hour and a half, so there's not even time to do it if we wanted to. Yeah, we need time to break down our equipment too. Yeah. So Lady Maxine is stunning quick, so, uh, and then that's uh, Sergeant Zakiel, I think it is. That's uh, the one that readies in yes. fights, is it? Something like that? And then Champion Anaphil and a Staunch Knight on the flank. Wow that's, a, wow, that's a pretty loaded Sanctum hand he just had there. Yes. And that's a Raiding Knight, I think, on the other flank. Uh, there's Nothing to capture, but... Capture, yeah. So, see, so John's, John's uh, He's got, got a couple of gateways two gateways in and uh, Coward's End, which is fortunate because I've been on the other end of Sanctum boards like this all the time, and if you don't have a way of clearing the entire board, it's almost impossible to crack this nut. Yeah, Sanctum is one of the most durable boards, uh, but we got the gateway out. That's the end of that. <laughs> All right, it looks like Jason has a decent, decent Shadow's hand. But to see, the funny thing is, like a lot of the stuff in Jason's hand. Oh, is no, which deck was it that had the double speed sigil? That's not on camera, no, right? No, that's not on camera right now. <clears throat> Maybe just run out the hey, replicator so and escape. After that board, he still he drew three back, three Sanctum back. No, those are Shadows cards, I think. So, Poison Wave to no effect. No, then this Dodger and Magda the Rat. And the Magda the Rat had no effect. Let's put three, three Sanctum cards in this hand <clears throat> now. Uh, no, those were Logos cards. Were they? Oh, yeah. Were they just looking at the... Uh, yeah. He drew, he drew a bunch diamond, of Sanctum cards diamond just Diamond Logos. Now. But yeah, the, diamond, the Logos Diamond and the Sanctum Diamond look very similar from afar. You're right. Gauntlet of the Command, followed by a troll, followed by Brothers in Battle, I think that's yep. what it's called. Yeah. That doesn't actually do anything. No, right it has now, right? no effect right now because he has no ready creatures. What do you think about running out of Magda the Rat when your opponent doesn't have any Amber to steal? Uh, I, I'm fine with it because you're going to give it back. It's not like, like it's not that great because it's only temporary. 
Okay, but like if you play Magda the Rat and then they kill it later while you have Amper, you basically oh, lost sorry, no, yeah, you, you, you can still right? lose the two. Yes. Yeah. No, never mind. That's right. Um, so let's cut what I just said. Yeah. Blinding Light, so he's going to stun Brobnar, I think. That's the one where you choose a house and yes. stun all creatures of that house. Follows it up with protect, protectrix, protect, protectrix. <clears throat> and I think that's something that captures stuff. I forget what it is exactly. So not as intimidating a board as he had a couple of turns ago. Uh, honorable claim. Thank you. Yeah, each, each friendly night captures a uh, one. Yeah, both uh, both players' hands are kind of awkward now. I mean, if if Jason was allowed to get at least one turn with that Sanctum board, he made things may have been a bit different. But um, as it is now, I wonder what John chooses as his house. I guess he could always play. Join Dees. Okay. Just to clear yeah. the uh, stun off the troll with a Dominator bubble. Was there a Gungoozle in his hand? No. Another gateway. Playing fast and loose with the gateways, eh? Crazy. But yeah, actually, so he does, yeah, see, here's where he gets to steal the two Amber back. So that's both of John's gateways. So was Jason on check before, or did he? Yes. Okay. He would have been out in six before. Yeah, that's a lot of chains. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a bunch of Logos cards in his hand. Yeah, I think you just call Logos here and just play out. Was that, no, is that a rise there? I don't know how many creatures he has. Oh, no, it's a mind barb. My bad. In uh, John's hand was yeah, mind barb? Yeah, he doesn't yep. have a rise, but. I think Jason here just should play out a bunch of Logos cards. A bunch, the, all the shadow stuff he has in his hand is fairly reactive, except for Bad Penny. Uh, the Twin Bolt is kind of awkward, too, but... I mean, I think whatever, you can play more cards. So using the Relentless Whispers just to get the Amber, follow it up with a Bad Penny. Well, first first comes the, uh, the Poison Skirmish, whatever her name is. Or no, that's Carlo Phantom, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Carlo Phantom. I mean, it, a lot of the times, Carl Phantom does nothing, but there's just games where you have five artifacts in play. Just, or, sorry, where you just play a bunch of artifacts, and it can be as bad as a Shatterstorm. <clears throat> Novu Archaeologist. Doesn't seem like John's been able to get anything going board state-wise for the last few turns. So he uses Pocket in Universe. Yep. And he also uses... I um, use it to draw a card, but... He also used Phase Shift to play Mind Barb. Just uh, dumping out a bunch of cards from his hand. Yeah. I mean, Phase Shift into Mind Barb doesn't seem like high value play normally, but when you got to cycle through your deck, you got to do what you got to do, right? There's still one more sweeper in, in uh, John's deck, the Coward's End. <coughs> Jason just won uh, Amber away from forging his first key of the game. Looks like he's calling shadows again. I'm going to start out with playing an Urchin, stealing one Amber from John. Urchin, one of my favorite uh, shadows cards. Doesn't, doesn't affect right away when you play it. And it has elusive, so... If your opponent doesn't do anything, you just reap and uh, kill. <laughs> yeah, despite despite John playing a bunch of sweepers, it's always been Jason that's been managing to bounce back with the huge board. But uh, having an active Novu archaeologist is uh, pretty big news for John. He's going to start with a wild wormhole. Let's see what he pulls. Pulls a Positron Bolt. Wow. Positron Bolt is probably the best possible card he could have played here. It's going to wipe his entire team out. Well, the Bad Penny is going to go back to his hand, but that was pretty lucky. 
think John's just deciding what he wants to archive here. He's got a lot of good picks. I mean, if he wants a sweeper in his pocket, he can certainly grab a gateway to Deese. Uh, Wild Wormhole is pretty good, just because it's the kind of thing, I mean, you can just play anytime you call logos. You don't need to have your opponent have a board or anything like that. Knowledge and pow his power is an interesting one. So I think he's going to gain an amber for his one uh, archived card there with the knowledge is power. Knowledge is power is one of those weird rares. I mean, I've, I've never, I've almost never seen it used for its amber side. I've kind of seen it as a, a, a slightly worse lab work most of the time. But uh, John ends up with a hand full of Brobnar cards, one of them being his Coward's End. I think as long as, uh, as, long as Jason lets him, he's going to probably keep playing Logos for the time being. But uh, Jason's going to try to change that, starting with a Twin Bolt of Mission, dealing two to the Archaeologist. And uh, following it up with Dr. Escatera for no Amber Gain. And then here comes... That's Dexter. The uh, Logos card everyone loves to hate. I never really looked at the art until a couple days ago and realized just how screwed up it actually is. Well, all the Logos guys are like that. Well, that one seems particularly screwed up, though. Like, the head for an arm thing is kind of... Yet, yet he's a human, and Dr. Escatera is a cyborg. It, Dr. Escatera looks more like a robot. <laughs> well, it could be a brain in a mechanical body. I don't know. When I think cyborg, I think of something that looks like Dexter. Sure. Whereas Dexter is just straight up human. Flavor fail. So Novo Archaeologist trades with Dexter. Uh, that's a. Oh, did he? Did he? Bro I guess he Brobnard there. Yeah. I see what he's doing. He played the Ganger Chieftain yes. to fight with the thing. Now he's going to play Anger to ready and fight Escatera. Probably going to use the Gauntlet of Command here. Yeah. To uh, to get a reap off. Although you could play the War Drummer to clear the Ganger Chieftain. Yeah, he could actually be four after. <laughs> yeah, reap with that guy. Uh, so yeah. So he'll use the, yeah, so what he does is he uses the Gauntlet of Command to ready, can't fight, so he reaps. Plays War Drummer to return the Ganger Chieftain. Going to play the Ganger Chieftain again, most likely, to ready War Drummer so he can reap with it. I mean, as far as Brobnar combos go, this is pretty good. Yep. It's, they're not, the Brobnar co combos, quote combos, are generally not as explosive as most other combos, but sometimes you can do cute stuff like this. Well, I mean, you also get to, like, the loot the bodies with a coward's end. Yeah. Here's a uh, unguarded camp. So because he has two more creatures than Jason, yep. he gets to steal capture two rather from his opponent. I don't think he's going to play that coward's end. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a I'm not a keyforge pro, but it seems like it would be bad. <laughs> so yeah, it jumps up to eight amber. Yeah, it doesn't. So finally he managed to get a board presence after a few turns of stumbling around. But it looks like uh, Jason has the has a Sanctum Hand once again. So Champion Tabaris, I think, was the creature that Tabaris, he played. Yeah. Tabaris, Tabaris. Uh, then uses Inspiration to, uh, to ready Tabaris. Probably going to, oh, fight the Chieftain. Takes four damage, I think. No, three damage. Three. And uh, captures one, gets the captured amber back. Also played out a Hallowed Blaster. Yep. John's able to get a... Uh, Sorry, just trailed off there.
What's your opinion on reverse time? John just drew it. Well, I've I've played some games where yeah. reverse time has been super effective. It's better when played early. You gotta have to yeah, because you have to have control over what's in your discard. Like you want to yeah. get good stuff back. If you have it early in your draw in your opening hand, you can do something like play only one or two houses. Yeah. And then have that be your deck. So use the pandemonium. This is Eater of the Dead that just got Yeah, I don't out. know why he did that before after the pandemonium. Mm. Oh, it just uses yeah, the war drummer to reap. So Bad Penny into Nexus into Mac the Knife. Nexus is going to be really good here with the um, the ability to use John's uh, Dominator Bobble or his Gauntlet of Command. Pocket Universe not so good <laughs> with the Nexus activation, but that's uh, going to set him. It's going to set him up for a pretty decent uh, Shadows turn next turn, especially now that he's drawn a I think. Uh, a Dodger and another Shadows card. <laughs> See, so I'm just looking at the deck names. The the tracker of bears, I don't understand why tracker is in quotes. Well we we talked about this earlier. It's because he doesn't have any bears or bear flutes. So well, he's the tracker. It's a sarcastic oh, tracker. But, I mean, is he supposed to track them in his deck or someone else's deck? I'm going to gongoozle to get rid of uh, the Nexus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was the most important creature to take off the board, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Nexus would have really messed with his uh, artifacts if he didn't let it, if he let it live there. <clears throat> yeah, this isn't a Netrunner tournament where it takes five hours to play out the top cut. <laughs> so I think he's going to purge with the Eater of the Dead. What's going on? Perch? He's using the Eater of the Dead, so he's purging something from the discard. Purges to get bigger, right? Yeah. yeah. So chooses to get rid of the... That's the Anna, ch champion Anathiel. Uh, uses his fancy power counter. Oh, so close for being to being good. I've noticed actually a trend in a lot of the games we've featured, and people who are watching this probably know this already, but like. A lot of the winning decks that we've uh, had on stream, they've had either Dees or Shadows or both. Um, in their, in I would their have decks. to think about it. There's definitely been a lot of Dees. I don't think we've had an Untamed deck today, have we? Yeah, we have. We had the oh, one that yeah, had a double yeah, witch right. of the... Uh, yeah, you're right. I don't know if he won that. I, no. I don't think he did. So finishing below. Mm. Takes, takes off the Eater, for the de eater of the Dead. <laughs> oh, he just reaped with Mac. Okay. Uh, could you bring up John's list again? It's a very, it's a very creature light, right? Is it? No, we're almost out. It seems like it is. Like his Brobnar, one, two, three, four. And he has one, two, three, four, five Dees creatures. And he has one, two, three, four. Yeah. So he only, only has like 12, 13 creatures in this deck. Okay, that explains it. He's. Because it, it just seemed like he wasn't being able to play, hasn't been able to play a lot of creatures out. But. Um, I mean, surprised he's been. He's been managing to do so well. Uh, obviously, made it to the top eight with such a creature-like deck. 
Now this is a question is like, yeah. You had to think about what, what are the cards you have left? Mm -hmm. And did you want to put them in your discard? Now we, we mentioned that you're not allowed to look at your opponent's Archon card list. Um, are, you're allowed to look at your own, right, during the game? Sure. Or no? Yep. Okay. That's not like referring to outside notes or anything I don't like think that? So. I mean, actually, I, actually, I don't know 100%, but mm -hmm. I would assume that it, you can. Yeah, I wasn't actually expecting to do all the judge rulings, so I have not reviewed in detail some of the <laughs> tournament we rules. We didn't, also didn't expect a top eight, so... <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, plays another Twin Bolt mission. <clears throat> puts two damage to both of these. I always get that in positive. Follows up with a Mac, Mac to do the other point of damage. That, is it, oh, that puts him at 8 Amber, I think. 8 Amber. Ready to forge key number 2. Oh, sorry. I guess John's forged a second key. Yeah, I guess we missed that. He did forge a second key. Good old Dexter. Hero of the Logos tribe. Novu Archaeologist and Mystery Card goes on the, the tail end there. It's a reader, though, apparently. <laughs> um, it's either Replicator or Research Smoko. Yeah, it's Research Smoko. Big board again. Jason's going to have to shovel his deck back up. I think he called. Mm, he's got that coward's end in his hand, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think he got it fired off again. He's got to loot the bodies, I think, so. Oh, that's going to be a huge turn. Actually, that that puts him in check, right? Yeah, and as long as he... Uh... Oh, God. And then he can reap a like at least once with the... Pile of Skulls. Pile of Skulls is not going to do anything... Or, oh well, actually, Pile yeah, no, Skulls. He, can, he can skill. He can steal all of. Because Kaurizan is not going to kill the terror. Yeah. So what's going to be left? The Tabris is going to be left on the board with the terror. Pile Skull steals a bunch of amber. Loot the bodies. Gains a bunch of. Amber. This is huge! Wow. That's gross. This is a gross turn. Oh my gosh. So he gains one, two, three, four. Five, the back from Dexter. One. Six amber. Captures six amber, right? Yeah, yeah. So he gains six amber from loot the bodies, captures six amber from pile of skulls, right? So he should end up at seven amber. Yeah, yeah. S and, seven amber. And then six on. Uh, yeah. I guess they're just going through one at a time. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, it's just fine. to make sure that nothing is uh, out of thing. <laughs> this is the most impressive coward's end I've ever seen. It's pretty, pretty good. I've, I've never quite seen this. <laughs> wow. <coughs> so what is that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six amber. It'll be six on to the terror, and it'll be to the terror. seven total for John right seven now. Seven total, and that's the guy. That's, Pingle. that's the annoying guy. Pingle who annoys. Yeah. Oh, what can he do? Does Jason have like a effervescent principle or a bait and switch or anything like that? I mean, he can kill. He can kill the terror and get back that amber, but uh, John wins, right? Maybe. So, Jason can fight and capture an Amber with Champion Tar Tabris. Sure, but he also needs. And, and so, if he ha but if he has another way, like if he has a ready and fight ability, he could he could potentially drop uh, John down to. It only drops him down to six, right? He's seeing two. He has eight. Yeah, John has eight Amber, right? Just looking through. Let me go take a look at his deck list. I don't think there's anything in there that is going to be able to uh, reduce him by three. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he, he didn't draw 
Ma- Magda the Rat was played a while ago. Oh, no, that's right. right. Uh, if he had a, a rating, r- night? rating night, yeah, rating night, champion Tabris. If he had, if he had inspiration, rating night in his in his hand, then he could um, he could prevent it. Or if he got his uh, honorable claim again. I don't know. Just based on the way he's looking at his hand, I don't know if he's got anything. He's going to start with a poison wave here. So that's not enough to kill the terror, but it will kill the uh, pingle. Okay. That's a start. Let's see what he's got next. I mean, he he could potentially get the amber back, so he's going to use Relentless Whispers to get the amber back. And he steals stole one. he stole an amber from oh relentless whispers. Will steal one. Steals if one. It okay. creature. So seven amber. <clears throat> now if he has the magda, then he's good. Uh, no, he doesn't yeah. have it. Yeah. yeah, I think he he because he did reshuffle his deck right, so he had the potential to draw it. Yes. Yeah. All right, congrats, John. Uh, we're that was go. A, that was a sweet combo. I just got to point that out, man. That's a, that is a very impressive Brobnar combo. Jeez.